Welcome back to War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas for Auburn and Arkansas. This is a huge game in the SEC West. With a win, Arkansas could take command and knock Auburn out of the race. The Tigers, however, could tie for the lead and would own the tiebreaker over the Hogs. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Mike Gottfried and Mike Adamley. It's great to have you with us. Ron Franklin would normally be in this chair, but because of an illness in his family, he cannot. And, Ron, our thoughts will be with you tonight. Mike, in this game, you have the number one rushing offense in the conference against the number one rushing defense in the conference. Something has to give. Mike, it's going to be interesting because Terry Browden calls the plays for Auburn, the head coach. He's going against the defensive coordinator and Joe Lee Dunn that likes to gamble, blitz, put eight and nine men up the line of scrimmage. He's an unorthodox caller of defenses. Now, how does that play? I don't know what the tempo of the game's going to be. Is Terry Bowden going to decide or is Joe Lee Dunn? And how does it involve Stephen Davis? Auburn has to get the ball in the hands of their big tailback. Mike Adamley is working the sidelines with us. Let's check in with him right now. Mike? Well, Mike, a word on Arkansas's fine quarterback, Barry Lunny. This kid was born and bred to be a Razorback. His grandfather, John, a great player here during the 40s, a four-year starter. His greatest moment as a high school player came right here in War Memorial Stadium. He led his team to the state championship, a team coached by his dad. He's had good success in college, but it hasn't exactly been a bed of roses. He's been benched. He's been booed. He's had three different head coaches and four different offensive schemes to learn. But through it all, he has persevered. He's the kind of kid you love to root for. And his dad and mom, Becky and Barry Sr., will be doing just that. Gentlemen? All right, Mike Edelman, thanks very much. Arkansas won the toss, elected to defer to the second half. That's Robert Baker, who is deep with Eric Hines Tucker, waiting the kick from Todd Lajarette. And we are underway in Little Rock. Baker at the four. And the ball comes down. Arkansas looks like they have it at the five. And they do. What a break on the opening kickoff. Marcus Campbell with the recovery. Mike, what a great hit by the special teams of Arkansas. Robert Baker, number 18, just gets bent back. The ball comes out. Marcus Campbell, number four, is going to recover it. And you talk about a giant break that Arkansas needs because they're a team that hasn't been in big games, and they need to get off to a good start as you look at their turnover ratio. And they know how to take the ball away from the other guys. Number one in the SEC. So they kick off and immediately have a first and goal from the Auburn five. Two tight ends, the single setback, Madre Hill behind on it. Madre Hill gets the carry. Maybe a yard, no more. Up quickly, strong safety, Martavius Houston. This is an offensive football team that likes to throw the football. Madre Hill, who just ran the ball, is a very dangerous pass receiver in this one back set. They like a lot of different misdirections with Barry Lunny, the quarterback, and they like Madre Hill down here close to the goal line. Two tight ends. Metters is the wide out. Now they have a second on the field. Lost it in the corner for Eubanks. Can't hold it. Nice coverage by Charles Rose, the free safety. Charles Rose, Rose is a receiver that's moved to safety last year for Auburn. In pretty good shape here against Anthony Eubanks. Just ran out of room. Anthony Lucas, number 80, checks in. They go with three wideouts on third and goal just inside the five. Lenny on the roll, under pressure. Throws in zone, touchdown Eubanks! Barry Lunny with his ninth touchdown pass of the year, and they make the turnover conversion into a touchdown. And it was important, Mike, that they get seven and not just three down here because Auburn's got a pretty powerful offensive football team. What makes that play is Barry Lunny's ability to run to the left in a left-hander 
gave him some more time to wait till Anthony Eubanks got open. The ladder rep for the point after out of the hole of the punter, Matt White. And it's 7-0 Hawks. Barry Lunny, the quarterback, is going to roll to his left. And when you're a left-hander, this is the way you want to go. Montgomery Hill with a good block. Now Auburn's in pretty good coverage, but you see at the back of the end zone, Anthony Eubanks, number two, waving his hands just to find the receiver. He's trying to make sure Barry Lunny finds him. Good catch, touchdown, Arkansas. Mike, it is hard to imagine a better break for a team like Arkansas, who hasn't played a big game in so long, come in to play a team like Auburn. They had to have something good early so they get a fumble on the kickoff. Uh -huh. I think it's real important, Mike. And the other thing for Auburn now, you know, it's going to be important for them now, their next series to get right back in this thing and to have some positive things happen. But this is a good Auburn football team. They're not going to go away just with one bad break. Robert Baker would like to atone for the mistake on the last kick. He's back there with Eric Hines Tucker. He got bent back on that kickoff return. I think he just gave the ball, but he was really going backwards. And 57,000 plus on their feet as Lauderette kicks off. Better kick this time. Baker all the way to the one. A little running room this time out over the 20 to about the 23. Take a look at our Russell Athletic starting lineup. Stephen Davis, the key to the offense, the defending SEC rushing champ, averaging almost 100 yards a game. Sophomore Tyrone Goodson has become a big play receiver, 28 catches, nearly 500 yards, 17 and a half a grab. And Shannon Robique anchors a good offensive line. He's a consensus all-conference choice. And it will be interesting to see how Arkansas tries to defend the ground game. Most teams have stacked it up against Stephen Davis. And Auburn's opening with a four-wide receiver set to try to play an open football game here with him, trying to get some momentum. And Davis isn't even in there. They go with Morrow as the running back. The pass complete to Willie Gaucher out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. That's where they've gotten their speed for Arkansas's defense. Stephen Conley with eight sacks not only leads the team, but's number one in the SEC. For the second year in a row, Mark Smith, number one in tackles. He was the conference player of the week in the Alabama win. The all-senior secondary has been tested this year. Tracy Cantwell, a good cover man. Second and two for the Tigers. Two straight plays in the shotgun. So Terry Bowden announces his intentions early. Nick's under a lot of pressure, but completes it downfield to Karsten Bailey. And Stephen Connolly, the sack leader, was coming from the blind side. Mike, my question coming in this game tonight was Terry Bowden going to play a close to the best game and run the football and try to get a fourth quarter game where they win it uh, by a touchdown? Or was the pace going to quicken like a basketball game? And that opening kickoff return, this is what happens. Now they're trying to loose it up a little bit as you see the defensive uh, Nix had the arm hit by Conley. It's an incomplete pass. So two plays, and Stephen Conley has one ball knocked away, nearly got a sack on the other. Mike, this is a blitzing team. That's what I was talking about, the pace of this game. When you go to four wide receivers, you're saying to the defense, we're throwing that football, and Arkansas is going to come after him. But you got a great tailback like Stephen Davis, and that opening play caused this. He, it, he wants to get in a scoring game. Auburn's first possession. Quarterback draw. Nix with room. Dives across the 40 to about the 46-yard line. It was Mark Smith, who was a Butkus candidate at the beginning of the year, who made the stop. Well, that's a nice call to take care of that rush. You were talking about Stephen Conley, two straight plays, rushing the quarterback. They allowed him to come in and just turned him. Shannon Robique with a good block on Junior Soli. Third and two. They stay with a four one. Nix with a quick set and too high to the sideline. It was intended for Willie Gaucher, but Spencer Brown was right there, and Auburn will have to kick it away. Well, if Arkansas had a choice, they'd like Auburn to play this way because it plays a little bit into their style of game. 
Whereas Stephen Davis, the big tailback, you pound him at them uh, 15, 20 times a game. I think they'd prefer to see the four wide receivers in a pass in a one-dimensional game. Matt Hawkins, the punter and the place kicker, kicking away to the diminutive J.J. Metters. Good kick. Metter signals fair catch and makes it to 12. Punt of 42, no return. Early first quarter, 7 0 Hogs. All right, gentlemen, tomorrow, you butt the mind. Say stop. Man, I'm hungry. Russell Athletic Wear is made to handle the toughest situations on and off the field. Hot dog. First fry. Hamburger. Tacos. Tacos grande. Pizza. Coach? Going somewhere, ladies. Hard work. Dedication. Commitment. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Get up there, Lord. Go, go. Will that be a window or aisle? Sir. Window. Well, at least you know where to sit when you get home. The Accord Coupe from Honda. Possibly the world's easiest decision. Uh, here we go. Whopper Junior Value Meal. Whopper for me and a double whopper. Thanks, man. Double whopper. I'm scared of you. It's good. It's as big as the American way. Big cars, big houses, big food. At Burger King, get the flame broil taste of a Whopper Value Meal for just your size appetite at just your size price, starting at $1.99. And get your burger's worth. And what about moderation? Moderation's cool, if there's a whole lot of it. <laughs> burger King, get your burger's worth. <laughs> ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by American Honda, celebrating their 25th anniversary of selling cars in America. With that touchdown pass, Barry Lunny now has all the significant records in Arkansas passing history. He'd been tied for the lead with 29, given 30 on his career. And Arkansas will start from its own 12, Madre Hill, the single setback. And Hill will get the kill. Room to run. Madre Hill. To the 28-yard line before the safety, Martavius Houston, can drag him down. Sophomore Madre Hill has emerged. This is a star for this club. The speedster leads the nation with 13 touchdowns. Freshman Anthony Lucas averaging over 21 yards a catch. Has 300-yard games. No one has ever had four at Arkansas. Up front, the line has matured. The only newcomer, a good one, Russ Brown. He is tough, strong, and athletic. After a gain of 20, Hill again. This time, Shannon Suttle brought him down from his left end spot. On defense, Auburn starts true freshman Jimmy Brumbaugh at the nose. He leads the down lineman in tackles. Marcellus Mostella is the leader of this club, the number one tackler and a two-time SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Del McGee, the only senior in the secondary, but he is the best cover corner anywhere in the Southeastern Conference. Go with three wide receivers and a setback on second and five. Hill has been impressive so far, as has Lonnie. Run the option. Madre Hill with a cutback has the first down after the 38-yard line. Terry Solomon. Got him from a linebacker spot, but so far Arkansas has been able to do what it wants on offense. Well, they've been impressive here early in the ball game. Their quarterback Barry Lunny is such a good leader for this Arkansas offense. One interception every 37 attempts. Now Eric Zier is the leader in the SEC uh, history. Barry Lunny is second. Very proud of that record when we talked to him yesterday at the hotel. An outstanding record. Play action by Lunny. Throws out in the flat. Has the completion of Eubanks, and Eubanks gets it up to about the 44-yard line. Like Barry Lunny grew up an hour from Fayetteville, and he said he had visits to UCLA and Oklahoma State, but he said he always knew he was coming here to Arkansas. And of course, being the, the major football power in this state, you should draw your 
hometown and home state players. He was thought of as the savior of Arkansas football, but he's had four different offensive systems, as Mike Adamley pointed out earlier since he's been here. That is no way to succeed for a quarterback. Two years he ran the option, which is not his game. Madre Hill just chewing up yardage in chunks to the Auburn 44-yard line. That was a gain of 12. This is the kind of start if you're Danny Ford you like because you're in the locker room before the game. You're talking to your team about this is the biggest game we've played. To get to the next level, we have to beat Auburn. To win this West, we've got to win this game. And they have just come out of that tunnel, and they're playing. Their feet are not touching the ground. Smash mouth so far, and Hill, five carries, 39 yards. A couple of good blocks on the last play. Bro Mitchell and Winston Anderson on the right side really cleared it out. Lenny changing the play. Looks to his left, throws in the flat, complete for a very short game. <laughs> he got it out to Eubanks. Let's go to Mike Adamley, Michael. Well, right now, Madre Hill is a good back, but Coach Danny Ford thinks he can be a great back, so he'll ride Madre pretty hard. You know, after a poor game against SMU in the opener, Ford dressed Madre down in front of the entire team. Madre, to his credit, took the criticism to heart, and the following week against South Carolina, a school record six touchdowns and 178 yards. This kid could be the real deal, according to Danny Ford. And Mikey has gone over 900 yards for the season. A sure bet to get 1,000 as a sophomore. Second and 11, given the loss of one on the last completion. And Lummi wants to use the timeout. Didn't like what he saw defensively. 9.29 to go. First quarter from Little Rock. The Hogs by a touchdown. This is the new Civic Sedan from Honda. More room. More refined. More luxury. More Civic. It's not often that within 30 seconds you can make a revolution. Before introduction, a Moen faucet is tested at least a half million times against leaks and drips so it's hard to find a more reliable faucet. No matter how you look at it, more. Buy it for looks, buy it for life. Oh, isn't that cute? What? You guys are like the three bears. You're double whopper, whopper, whopper junior, bing, bang, boom. I'm hungry, so what? Well, nothing just sort of struck me as funny. So what are you saying, I'm like the mama bear? <laughs> a whopper value meal for any size appetite, starting at $1.99 every day at Burger King. That's getting your burgers worth. Hey, uh, baby bear, you gonna finish those fries? Yes. Ooh, somebody needs a nap. <clears throat> <laughs> Most new car radiators are made of aluminum, as thin as the top of this can. But Prestone antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming the Prestone zone of protection against corrosion. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone zone. The final Southwest Conference Championship is up for grabs. Texas Tech versus Texas. Next Saturday at 7, only on ESPN. If you just joined us, Arkansas kicked off. Auburn fumbled the kickoff return at its own five-yard line. Arkansas converted. And now Auburn's defense, that's Anthony Harris, digging in, trying to stop this drive. It's second and 11 hogs at the Auburn 45. Great four-man rush. Lenny, scrambling, still looking, still scrambling, and taken down by the true freshman, Jimmy Brumbaugh, the nose man. They were going to redshirt him, but when they got into practice, defensive line coach Joe Witt said, this kid will be able to play. We can't redshirt him. He's a good player, Mike, and you're right. He's a true freshman, and he's one when you coach, you say you're hoping that he can play, but you're hoping he doesn't have to his freshman year. And he's playing Let's right go. now for Auburn and the big sack from Barry Lenny. Third and 13 for Arkansas. And really the first defensive spark we've seen from Auburn. Anthony Lucas is lined up on the single receiver side to the left. And he may be the key receiver on this play. Talk about young, potentially great players. Lenny goes back the other way, Eubanks. 
Inside the 25, near the 21, another Arkansas first down. It's a gain of 26. Three receiver side, Mike. You put three receivers to one side, the single receiver back to the other side. They work the side. The three receivers are on because they get Anthony Eubanks against the linebacker, Anthony Harris. Three-year starter, so a mismatch for Arkansas, and they make it work for a first down. They'll go to a two tight end set this time. First and 10 from the Auburn 21. Madre Hill, another good hole, and takes it down to the 17. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday at 12.30. Illinois and Iowa collide. Then at 7, Texas Tech against Texas. And you can catch all the action on college game day and the scoreboard shows. Mike Rocky felt with the offensive coordinator is calling an excellent ball game in this first couple of series because he's really keeping Auburn off balance. It's been a nice blend, second and six. Hill again. Even when it doesn't look like there's much there, he gets three or four. To Keo Spikes, another true freshman, the middle linebacker was in on the tackle. He's the number one prospect out of the state of Georgia last year. And he beat out a three-year starter, Jason Miska, in this ball game, so you know he's a very talented player as a freshman. Well, you remember a couple games we've had with Miska. Uh, he's I mean, he player. is a hitter. Last year against Arkansas, had one of the biggest games of his career. 15 tack, third and three. Lonnie on the option again. Cuts it back. Lonnie inside the five. First and four, Arkansas. Mike Carlos Showers, number 78. They really had an advantage on this play. Looked like Auburn might have got lined up late. Carlos Showers, number 78, the left tackle with a very good block on the option. You're going to see number 78 to the left side. Did a good block. Now Barry Lonnie comes out. No option, turns into a run for him and a big first down. A nice patience by Lunny on that because he had Hill open on the wing early, but he wanted to stretch it out as far as he could before he made his decision. And you have a quarterback that can run and you can do so many things. Hill hitting the backfield and drops. It'll be a loss of two or three. Outstanding defensive play on Gray Miller. The senior outside linebacker. Andre Miller just going to make a move inside and just beat the block of Winston Anderson, get in the backfield and make the tackle to try to put Arkansas in a long yardage situation. This Auburn defense needs a big play. Good to stop them the last time they were down here. Lenny hit a third down pass in the end zone for the score after the turnover. Now it's second and goal. Draw play. Hill inside the five to about the four. Brumbaugh makes another tackle. Mike, when that play is second down in long yardage, you see the Arkansas offensive linemen, they're all standing to make you look like it's a two-point stance, to make you feel like it's going to be a pass. Then they turn the draw on you, hit you with the draw with Madre Hill. A little disguised by Rocky Felker, gets the ball inside the five. Arkansas has converted on every third down so far. Third and four here. Lonnie changing the play. Comes back to the short side. Lucas, comes down. That is the advantage of having a senior quarterback who has seen it all in this league. He saw single coverage on a guy he wanted to go to. You know, Mike, you're so right, because when he came to the line of scrimmage, he saw blitz coming. He saw 47, Marcellus Mostello, and Anthony Harris cheating up a little bit, so he knew he had the short slant to the right side. A lot of red for another point after. And underdog Arkansas jumping all over the Auburn Tigers leading four. Nothing.
Invited to discover the newly expanded True Test paint store at Uncle Bob's True Value Hardware. James Stallworth, with 20 years of paint experience, helps guarantee customer satisfaction. James loves to help you, and he offers free custom color tinning and perfect matches using the latest technology with his color analyzer computer. And James can save you time and money on your next painting project. Paint help is spoken at Uncle Bob's in downtown Andalusia. Come see us for all your paint needs. About a story about how Roger Clemens has lost his best fastball. He has not lost his best fastball, Jack. Oh, come on. 89, 90 miles an hour tops. 95, 96, two weeks ago, 100 earlier this year in Detroit, he can still bring it. Yeah, I don't believe that. All right, wait, we can settle this real easily. Rocket, could, could you come in here for a second? What's up, gang? Jack here says you, you can't bring it anymore. Oh, is that right? Can you hold that for me, please? 98. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I told you yeah. a story. Got right. it. Thanks, right. Roger. You got it, guys. Anytime. The Arkansas Razorbacks have put 14 points on the board. The Auburn defense must be stunned. 14 plays, 88 yards, took nearly eight minutes off the clock. And Mike, I think we'll see Stephen Davis now come in and uh, Terry Bowden get back to a, a good mix of offense. He's still only down two touchdowns very early in this ball game. A lot of time to come back. Baker and Hines cut with the deep man. Baker again, this time a yard deep in the end zone. No place to go, stop short of the 20. Here's Shannon and Sidney, excellent coverage on special team. Mike, here's what you were talking about on the touchdown. Here's what he, here's what Barry Lundy was seeing. He was going to see a blitz from both linebackers, Harris and Mostella, coming from both corners. And he checked off to the quick slant to Anthony Lucas. And you're right. And you have a senior quarterback, and he can read the defense. So much more effective. And then when he's got the ability to carry it out physically, you've really got some. There's Stephen Davis making his first appearance. He and Beasley will line up in the eye behind Patrick Nix. Number six all time on Auburn's legendary rushing line. 20 yards almost on his first carry. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Michael? Okay, Mike, for the folks who didn't catch it earlier today, Nebraska was held 200 yards under their rushing average. They ran for 226. They still had plenty, including Amon Green, just under 100 yards, a couple of touchdown runs in Nebraska's win by 23 in both. Thank you, Mike. And Stephen Davis has just moved past Stacy Dantley for number five all time. By the end of the year, he could catch Brent Fullwood. No one will catch Bo Jackson, who's number one. What's important here, Mike, now is Auburn's offensive line gets a chance to come off the ball and smack somebody. The first series, they threw passes in a wide open set. Now you get a chance for that good running back, Stephen Davis, to come off the ball. When they have a good offensive line, too. Nix wants to throw on first down, goes out in the flat, completes it to Tyrone Goodson. He's forced out of bounds. Steve and Lunny are a lot alike as far as their uh, offensive abilities as quarterbacks. They, they're very smart. They try not to make the mistakes. They're better. They, they really, and they understand their system, Mike. They understand what the coaches want them to do within the system, and they can make the changes that they need to make. Although Auburn doesn't check off much at the line of scrimmage. Second and five. Set up in the eye. Davis. Brooks at the line and scrimmage. And it was Mike Nunnerly who got a hand on an ankle and brought him down as he crossed the border. Last year he had a great game against these Arkansas Razorbacks. And last year he averaged 20 carries a game. This year he's down to 15. And the reason he's down to 15 is because more and more teams are piling up eight and nine people when Auburn's in the eye attack. And when they go to the four wide receivers, they bring in another running back so uh, Harold Morrow so he goes out of the ball game so he's not played as much and not run the ball as much this year and it cost him a shot at the Heisman he was certainly a candidate coming in at the start of the year third and four Nick's out of the shotgun quick throw incomplete off of the fingertips of the freshman Robert Baker looked like it would have been a first down and a good throw by Nick's 
Robert Baker's off to a rough start here in the early going. He's a freshman. He was an All-State running back his senior year in high school, but he was an All-State wide receiver his junior year. So he's a very talented young player. And they got him out of Gainesville, Florida, because they promised him a chance to play wide receiver and not defensive back. Hawkins to punt. Metters waits at his own 15. Pretty kick. Takes an Arkansas bounce and goes back near the 20-yard line. Punt of 39 and no return. Tuesday night at 9, Mark Messier will lead the Rangers into San Jose to take on Craig Janney and the Sharks. Messier only four goals shy of reaching 500. Just last Thursday night, Mario Lemieux became the 20th player to join that elite group. Hope you join us Tuesday night, 9 Eastern, and the NHL on National Hockey Night. Lunny so far, he's only missed one and has two touchdowns. 31 for his career. Madre Hill sets up as the single running back. Running with a short set. Seven yard gain on the completion to J.J. Metters. Metters listed at 5'6", 162. And if he's that, it's with an anvil in his pocket and elevator shoes. Now I'd say about 5'2". And uh, you're talking maybe he was riding cigar today in his off time, you know, as a jockey. Well, when he walks away from you, it does look like somebody stole his horse. He's a talent, though. They'd like to get the ball to him seven, eight times a game. He's number two all-time on the receiving charts here. Hill, as they go back to the ground game, up to the 37, the fifth tackle. Martavius Houston has had to make. It's not a good sign when you're strong safety making all the stops. And really, there's good line blocking by Arkansas. Earl Scott, the center, number 66, has really opened up some good holes, and Madre Hill's been able to cut behind him. The center number 66, Earl Scott just walling off. Madre Hill is able to get through and pick up the first down. Hill 10 carries 55 yards. This is his 11th. Nice cut and then tripped as he got across the 40-yard 40, uh, 40 line. Takeo Spikes made the tackle. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike, UCLA, two touchdown favorite, is struggling at home with Cal. Pat Barnes nearly lost the snap. Touchdown pass, great catch by Iani Uwezoke. He's over 100 yards. They're going to be tied at seven approaching halftime. Mike, easy for you to say. <laughs> Mike enjoyed saying that, didn't he? Yes, he did. Get him right, it's fun. Oh, Second and six for Arkansas. It's been all hogs. Gray Hill dragging a tackler with him to the Auburn 45-yard line. Anthony Harris got a free six-yard ride. It's a gain of 15. Rocky Felker is spreading the field out against Auburn, number one. There's a linebacker. You're playing with six people in the box right here. That's the safety back in the back. So when you got six people, you've got an advantage as the offense. Madre Hill again looks for the block of Russ Brown. Earl Scott just picks behind it. They feel that Madre Hill could be the fastest running back they've ever had here in high school. He rushed for over 6,000 yards and had 68 touchdowns. Running, play action. Dumps it off, Eubanks. And Eubanks brought down at the Auburn 38-yard line. Are you talking about Madre Hill? When he came to Arkansas, he said, he pronounced, he told everybody, he said, announced it. He said, I'm going to win the Heisman here. And he said, everybody laughed. And Danny Ford said, we were losing. Now, how can a guy come in here and say he's going to win the Heisman Trophy? But he has a lot of confidence. And Danny Ford has a lot of confidence in Madre Hill. Good running back, but also very dangerous out of the backfield, catching a flare pass. You watch the way he runs. How could you not have confidence in the young man? He's only a sophomore. 4 3 40 speed. And that's something with his size at 180, 185. Second and three. When he thought about changing the play, now he is. Hill dives forward about a yard shy of the first down as Marcellus Marstella, the young man who leads his team in tackles, got in there. Two-time SEC Defensive Player of the Week. He's been in double-digit tackles three straight games. 
see the Auburn defense not quite getting settled against this Arkansas offense. Third and a yard. Arkansas already up 14 nothing. Lunny with another audible. Goes right to Hill, and Hill has the first down. Blumbaugh, the nose man, made the tackle, but not until they had the necessary yardage. And there's 41 seconds to go in the first quarter, and you would not think the Danny Forge Club was the one that was an underdog coming in against Terry Bowden. Not the way they play. They just have come out in this football game with a game plan and sticking with it, playing with a lot of emotion, a lot more emotion than Auburn's playing with right now. This team, Arkansas, is just playing sky high in this first quarter. Well, the Tigers say they want a rematch against Florida. To get it, they've got to win this game. Four-man rush, one in the time. Now room to run. And Lunny gets out of bounds inside the Auburn 25-yard line. Seems to be very under control, very calm. He, he doesn't make mistakes, and that goes back to that interception ratio. He doesn't make mistakes and throw the ball to the other ball club. He has a chance to throw this one right now to Anthony Lucas, but he chooses to run. Jimmy Brimbaugh chasing him down, but another first down. When you have a mobile quarterback, it just makes so many things. It's another dimension that you have to coach against. This is the first time in his career in college he's been surrounded with some talent, had a defense that could play, finally being able to show what he can do as a quarterback. On first down, Madre Hill. Only a couple. And Danny Ford has to love what he's seen so far. Arkansas here in Little Rock at the end of the first quarter. Leads 11th ranked Auburn, 14 nothing. State Farm presents the rules of the game. We're talking about running into the kicker. In this play, the kicker is contacted. A penalty flag is thrown. Why? As a new parent, my hours can be pretty unpredictable. I think a lot of the young parents that come into my office and talk about life insurance have a lot of the same needs and have gone through a lot of the same things that I've gone through. They're really looking for somebody to tell them about life insurance, to talk to somebody they trust. When people leave my office, I think they feel that, hey, this guy doesn't just know about life insurance, he knows about life, too. We're talking about running into the kicker. In this play, the defender is blocked into the kicker. The rule states the foul is on the defender, even though blocked into the kicker. Five-yard penalty. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, you didn't get tomatoes? Nah, I've been kind of a rut lately. You know, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Whopper, no tomatoes. Change your pace. Exactly. Expecting a weave and you bob. Mm -hmm. They're thinking zig, you zag. Yeah. You're a bold man. The Whopper. It always tastes great because it's always fixed your way. With fries and a drink for just $2.99. Every day at Burger King. So, you out of your rut? I believe I am. You're rutless. Enough with the ruts. You've been ejected from the rutmobile. No ruts, no glory. Remember, it's not only how fast you can go, it's also where you can go. The new Honda Passport with standard dual airbags and one powerful V6 engine. Go there. You're cruising at 13,000 feet. Winds are moderate, sky is clear, a perfect day to jump. It's Blue Sky Skydiving outside Seattle, where you can see the world at 160 miles an hour. So if you're crazy enough to try it, make sure you're smart enough to bring your Visa card, because at Blue Sky's American Express just won't fly. By the way, they do insist you pay first. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Back in Little Rock, where Arkansas has jumped on top of Auburn, 14-0, getting ready to start the second quarter. 
Auburn in the first period had the ball for all of two minutes and 37 seconds. The rest has been Arkansas. They go to three wides on second and nine. Lunny has hit seven of eight, 52 yards and two touchdowns. And Madre Hill has run for 79 yards. First quarter. Pump fake and a throw. There ought to be a flag on this one, and there is. The defensive back, Del McGee, who's a tremendous cover guy, bit on the fake and made contact, which is a smart play. Well, he was beaten on the out and up and just making contact on J.J. Metters, but the ball has to be in the air when he was making that contact, and I'm not sure it was. There's a throw, but we, do, we don't see the contact, but I think the contact was when the ball was not in the air. Let's see how the call goes. I think that was probably what they were discussing. This is after size Of interference. On the defense, the penalty would be at the spot of infraction. The first down. Even if the ball has just left the quarterback's fingertips, it right. counts. And in their estimation, that's exactly <laughs> what they called. <laughs> you see the scores coming in. We'll have them every uh, 10, 30, and 50 minutes after the hour. The penalty puts the ball inside the nine-yard line. Another first and goal situation for Arkansas. Otto Cotton checks in as a wide receiver. Now he comes out along with Lucas as they send in two tight ends, Baker and Herring. 83 and 89. So with two wides and Madre Hill the single setback. Go, 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 go. Hill inside the five near the three. Oh, this is just smash mouth football. Mike, they open it up, they throw, and then they come back and run the football. Now, Earl Scott is just having a great game at the center position, number 66. Snapping the ball to Barry Lunny, then he makes the key block. Madre Hill cuts right behind him for big yardage. And a timeout, Auburn. 14.32 to go in the half. Arkansas trying to go up by 21. This is Jack. He's learning about airplanes on a PC with an Intel Pentium processor inside. The Pentium processor has the power to make software look, sound, and feel more real. Which lets Jack's imagination really take off the Intel Pendium processor. In searching for a luxury performance sedan, Michael Young tested the Oldsmobile LSS against three of the fastest Japan has to offer, the Infiniti J30, Lexus ES300, and teppanyaki chef Yasu Norimoto. And while his 240 horsepower LSS was no match for Yasu's speed, not only did Mr. Young fare much better against the imports, he had them for lunch. Will the LSS pass your test? Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART. About Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new truck payment stretch you to the limit. Call 1-800-32-SMART. About Smart Lease by GMAC. It keeps new vehicles well within reach. 14-0 Arkansas, and the Hogs have the ball second and goal of the three. Three tight ends check into the Arkansas lineup. Henry the blocking back from Madre Hill. And Terry Bowden knows his defense has got to hold here. They give it to Henry, the fullback, and he's down near the one, maybe a little closer than that. Andre Miller with the tackle. Let's go to Mike Adamley. What's it like down there, Mike? Well, Mike, this is not a team that is playing like it's got a shot to take over the lead in the SEC's Western Division. As we've said many times, football, a game of emotion, and the Auburn bench right now, as it's been from the start of the game, emotionless. These guys 
needs some kind of lift, some kind of break to get back in it, because they could be in trouble. I've never seen it like this before. Well, the fumble on the opening kickoff will still t sure take the air out of your balloon, won't it? They look like they're stunned, Mike. They're just completely stunned on this field. Third and goal. Timothy helicopter moves troops. The flag down. Touchdown. Now we'll check the flag. May have been motioned before the snap. It looks like you could run that option play 50 times. Well, what happened is Auburn boxed everything up inside. Barry Lunny saw it, was able to come outside with the option. Burn the touchdown holds. Touchdown. 20 to nothing, Arkansas. Well, they'll tell you around here, all we needed was an opportunity to get in a huge game after they beat Alabama in such tremendous style on the last play of the game. Now they have a chance to put Auburn out of the race in the SEC West. They're doing a pretty good job of it. A lot of rep for the point after. 21-0 Arkansas. Well, Mike Adamley was talking about the lack of emotion on the Auburn sideline. As a coach, do you sense that? And if you do, what can you do about well, it? Well, I think what uh, Terry Bob did the last series was the thing you have to do. you got to go back and play a little bit of tough nose football. Let your linemen come off the ball a little bit. But now, behind 21 to nothing, you still got a lot of time. This is a, this is a powerful Auburn football team that can score a lot of points. It's not time to to wave the white flag yet, but you got to get some emotion. Patrick Nix has to take over. You've got to look at your senior guys. You're on the road here. You're a veteran football team. You've won a lot of ball games, but you look at Stephen Davis right here, you just, you don't see the emotion that you want to see on the sideline to accept the challenge. Shannon Robic is a senior center, so eventually your seniors have to take over on the field for you and on the sideline. And one thing they've done is keep the fans in this from the opening second of the game, and you've got a sellout crowd of 53,727. And this is still one of the few places on the earth where you can wear one of those pig hats and still be socially acceptable. Not get arrested. And a good option play here again. Auburn tried to box everything up inside. Madre Hill with the option pitch. Gets in the end zone, gets a good block from Tyrone Henry for the score, but Auburn's not out of this thing yet. It's a lot of time this ball game. They just need a good drive to get back in this thing. This is going to be an important series for them right here. And offensively, they have made it look easy. Taken by the up man, Karsten Bailey, and Bailey retreats and is buried. Marcus Campbell downfield for Arkansas. It's like every button that Danny Ford pushes right now works. They deep kick the ball to Baker. He fumbles it. Then they just uh, pooch kick this one right here. And uh, they're right down with good coverage, but they're offsides on the kickoff. Might be the first mistake they've made tonight. If you're Auburn with that offensive yeah, talent, you want to be kicked it again. On the kicking team, we're going to five five-yard penalty and re-kick. Danny Ford, a controversial hire when he came to Arkansas, had gone into farming after he left Clemson under a cloud of an NCAA investigation. Frank Royals said uh, he owned up to the mistakes he made there. Said, I understand what kind of program you want here, and you'll have it. I've always liked Danny Ford, and... Uh, Terry Lunny, the quarterback, said the other day when we were talking to him, he said, I didn't even know who he was when he came in here. He said, but he told us we've accepted losing here, and he's not going to accept it, and uh, you guys don't mind playing close, but we're going to win here. And, and when I asked him, I said, well, how'd he do it? He said he did it on the field by tough practices, but always talking to us and talking us through it. But Danny Ford brings to this program confidence, and he knows how to win. He had a great quote. Somebody asked him if he could win a national championship at Arkansas. And he says, we did it at Clemson. We can do it here. And he's right. He's got the opportunity in the SEC. A lot of rep to kick again. Baker and Hines Tucker the deep man. one nothing Arkansas. Baker from the 13. Nowhere to go. Look at that cover. Arkansas, their feet aren't touching the ground. 
Philip Hayes down to make the tackle. Campbell was in there again, too. Well, you like a game plan when you talk to your team the night before the game or even Thursday night, and you tell them what you want in a ball game, and then they take it from the locker room and the meeting room to the field. Special teams, they've been perfect. Philip Hayes, number 15, with a tackle. Again, making Auburn go the length of the field. There is a flag down. It looks like a personal foul against Arkansas. It was a late hit, I believe, on a block that was flagged. So Auburn gets a break, takes the ball out to the 36-yard line. And the entire Auburn offense huddled on the sideline. And here they come. The time of possession is incredible. 2.37 for Auburn. That's why this drive is so important because you got to put time on the clock. You got to give your defense who shell shot behind 21 to nothing some time on that bench to recover. The toss to Davis. Davis across the 40 to about the 41. And Arcan or Auburn, still one of the few teams, instead of handing off on that play, will go with that little toss. Well, this is a 1976 offense. I'm telling you, this is Bobby Bowden's Florida State, uh, West Virginia, the 1976. And Terry Bowden has brought it here to Auburn, and it's a, it's a very good, solid offense. But to get back in this game, they need 48 Stephen Davis. Second and five. Certainly Auburn capable of scoring a lot of points. Incomplete pass intended for Goodson wide from Patrick Nix. Go back to what I said again. They do not want to go three and out here again and put that defense back on the field. When Arkansas is controlling the clock, having so much success, this is a big third down for Patrick Nix. Needs to keep his offense on the field. 0 for 2 and third down. Three wide. Check in. And the Arkansas fans don't need any help yelling. They started yelling an hour before this game started. And they haven't stopped. Straight four-man rush. Nicks with time over the middle. Complete first down to the 40-yard line. Willie Gauthier makes the catch. Big right there. And again, you look for your seniors. Patrick Nix, a fifth-year senior, making that throw. He had good protection against Joe Lee Dunn's blitz from Arkansas and hit Willie Gauthier, who's the most consistent receiver on this Auburn football team. Patrick Nix is only the fifth Auburn quarterback ever to go over the 4,000-yard mark passing. Mike, they score here. They'll get right back in this thing. I mean, they're a powerful football team. They just need something good to happen to get the, the emotions back in this ballgame. First and 10 inside the Arkansas 40. Nick changing the play. Give it to the fullback, Fred Beasley. And he stopped by Mark Smith, the strong side linebacker. I've been talking about Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas. This is he. He's hidden right here because they're trying to hide the signals. But Joe Lee Dunn, you notice, does not wear a headset. He makes all the calls on field. He told me, he said, I've been doing this for a long time on the sidelines. I don't want to talk to coaches. I'll talk to them after, the, uh, after my defense comes on the sideline. And he's a unique bird on that defensive sideline. He's made a difference for this team. Nick's under pressure. And just gets the completion out of the 26-yard line, Gauthier. And Philip Hayes nearly got there. Well, when you play against Joe Lee Dunn, you expect him to come. He, you expect him to blitz the, the kitchen sink because you know, it always seems like there's 12 guys coming. But Patrick Nix was able to get his head around. He's going to fake the ball to the right. Philip Hayes is on a blitz, number 15. But Patrick Nix made that play to really go sink. And then Tracy Cantlow nearly got there for the interception. First and 10 Auburn. Loose football. Arkansas has it. Picked off by Philip Hayes after it hit the ground. Grabs the fumble. And Auburn's good-looking drive comes to an end. And I think that was set up. It looked like Nick stumbled, taking the snap from center and turning around the handle. I don't think they ever got the handoff there because when Patrick Nix came out, he either the center stepped on his foot, something happened when he came, when he whirled around, and he dropped that football. Patrick Nix is going to reverse out. Looks like his foot got stepped on by either the center or the guard, and the ball never really got to Fred Beasley, and he dropped it for the fumble. 
and you can't fault the running back for that. It's the quarterback's responsibility to put that ball in his helmet. Here comes Madre Hill back the other way out to the 35. And Mike, you said if Auburn scores there, they're right back in the game. I totally agree with you. But now, if Arkansas, which has had its way with this Auburn defense, can march down and get another score, you might warm up the bus. Yeah, you got a chance to. Uh, still not going to rule this Auburn team out because I see some good things out there, but uh, you can't keep giving this Arkansas team the ball. Ten minutes, 49 seconds to go in the first half. 21 nothing Hogs. Second and eight from their own 35. Running under pressure and sacked back at the 26-yard line. The pressure from Mark Smith, who's out of Hines Community College in Mississippi. Mike Danny Ford, when he was at Clemson, one of his favorite people, and of course one of the favorite people at Clemson is Frank Howard, the legendary football coach at Clemson. And Danny talked to him his, his first couple of years there. Danny would read out of the coach's manual. He talked about, you know, when we win, it's we win. When you lose, it's I lost the right. coach. And he said he'd go on his TV show and say, I lost this. Now, he said, finally, Frank Hart pulled him aside. He said, buddy, he said, <laughs> you keep saying that. Fans are going to believe you, and you're going to be out of here. <laughs> Frank Howard, something else. Arkansas by 21. In searching for a luxury performance sedan, Michael Young tested the Oldsmobile LSS against three of the fastest Japan has to offer. The Infiniti J30, Lexus ES300, and teppanyaki chef Yasu Norimoto. And while his 240 horsepower LSS was no match for Yasu's speed, not only did Mr. Young fare much better against the imports, he had them for lunch. Will the LSS pass your test? Let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Today, President Dion picks the primetime NFL dream team. At corner, me, Dion. It's up for grabs and Dion picks it up. At quarterback, Dion. Dion. At wire. Dion? He's got Dion wide open and he's losing it. <laughs> Dion has decided to allow someone else to play wide out. Mm. Primetime NFL. Available November 7th. <laughs> Sports. The top ranked Seminoles take their national championship quest to Charlottesville. Florida State versus Virginia. Thursday at 8. Only on ESPN. ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company, and by Oldsmobile. Linebackers, monsters in the middle, and Arkansas has had some great ones, like All-American Wayne Harris, who still leads the Razorbacks for tackles in the season, and two-time All-American Billy Ray Smith, who went on to a great career in the pros, one of the most ferocious players I ever saw. Frank Broyles, what a great career he had at Arkansas as the football coach. Of course, now still the athletic director, and I hope he stays a long time. He's a, he's a good yes, man, sir. and uh, uh, it's been a lot to college football. Winston Alderson, the right tackle, came out. Looked like he really injured his right ankle. Scott Rivers checks in at that point. Alderson had had a big game so far. Third and 15. One, he throws short. Got Metters. J.J. Metters across midfield of the 49-yard line. Well, what's impressive about J.J. Metters here is that he needed about 15, 16 yards for the first down. Now, he's going to make that catch against Dell McGee, number 24. Now, it's a five-yard catch, but now count the yards after the catch for the first down for J.J. Metters. What speed and acceleration. And broke a couple of tackles along the way. And they like to punish the little receivers, a little kicking, a little easy getting up there. But J.J. doesn't mind. He got the first down. 5'6", 152 is what he is listed at. No. He's not 5'6". 
He playing an under five six basketball. Muggsy Bogue, right? Now, how right. big is Muggsy Bogue? Muggsy's five six. I think Muggsy a tower over JJ. But it's uh, production that counts, and he's certainly given it to them. About 34 passes coming in. Arkansas has converted all seven of its third down opportunities tonight, and Lunny has hit eight out of nine for 75 yards and two touchdowns. ESPN is your home for college football on Thursday at 8. Warwick Dunn and Florida State against ACC rival Virginia. But start your weekend right at 7.30 with a weekend kickoff show. Back at Little Rock, and we have another player down. Haven't been able to identify him for you and check the scores as they come in. You can get the scores 10, 30, and 50. And the Indians continue to hang in there. Haven't won a World Series since 1948. Harry Truman was president. Haven't been in one since 1954. Everybody left him for dead. But if they win tonight, it goes to game seven. All the people in Ohio. Of course, they're excited about Ohio State. And Why not? A lot of the other ball clubs there. But the Cleveland Indians has got everybody's attention. I think what did it was the movie Major League. It got, got them excited. And it's Leron Thomas, backup strong safety, who is coming up. Who were their big four in 1954? Early win, Bob Feller, Bob Lemon. Mike Garcia. Mike Garcia. Big Bear. Yes, sir. And with that great pitching staff, they couldn't win again against the Giants. Been some great pitching in this series, though. First and ten. Hog just across midfield. Madre Hill gets five more. Took Anthony Harris, the strong side linebacker, to hit him and bring him down. But Arkansas is hitting on all cylinders offensively tonight. And to me, this is a huge drive, even if they come away with just a field goal. Well, the time of possession has been so lopsided in this football game. You got a tired defense, number one, out there for Auburn, and an offense that lacks a little confidence right now on the bench, waiting to get back on the field. Four wide receiver package on second and five. Running with a short set to quick pass, and he's got Anthony Lucas, the freshman, brought down by Melton. When Anthony Lucas was six years old, his dad took him to Mississippi Valley, and they had a pretty good wide receiver up there. And ever since he watched uh, Jerry Rice play, he wanted to be a wide receiver. And you notice his number, Anthony Lucas. Pretty good move, just coming off the line of scrimmage. Little hitch play right in front of Larry Melton. Nice catch just with keep, his hands. Just keep those chains moving. There's a kid who, who committed to UNLV, then Louisiana Tech finally ended up here. And they are really happy to have him. Look at the numbers on the running. He's missed one. Excellent protection from the line. The running goes deep for Lucas and overthrown. Threw that one into double coverage. They had Taylor and Melton converging at the goal line. Ryan Taylor, if he'd have broke just a little earlier on that play, he might have had an interception on it. Good coverage, good double coverage by Auburn, but Ryan Taylor just reacted a little bit slow. You see the ball thrown down the middle. Number six, Ryan Taylor is going to come. Just got a slow start on that. Possibly could have had an interception against Lucas. It is second and ten from the Auburn 34. Two wides, two tight ends, and Madre Hill. One nice play fake. Throws back the other way as the tight end Herring. Lunny in complete command of this offense. Let's go to Mike Tarico. Oh, Mike, this McDonald's breakaway checks in on the North Texas-Alabama game earlier today. Gene Stallings out of conference, up 17-7. Brian Bergdorf, play action fake to Todrick Malone, 51 yards, sluggish. Something very impressive, but Bama gets the job done by 19 today. And Mike, they'll certainly be interested in the outcome of this ball game. After losing to Arkansas, still having to face Auburn, here are the standings. Arkansas with a win would just about eliminate Auburn, and Alabama would have to hope for some help from someone else. And you talk a lot of it. At the beginning of the season to say that Arkansas could knock off Alabama and Auburn right. in the first season, that's a mouthful. And of course, the tiebreaker is head-to-head -head competition. 
and they would have a huge advantage over both. Time of possession, Mike, with 9.10 to go on the clock. Auburn can on the field, four minutes, 45 seconds on offense. And you talked about the defense being tired, and, and you'll have people come up to us and say, why does the defense get more tired than the offense? It's harder to play defense. Every guy's got to go all out every point. And those red jerseys right now got a lot of adrenaline flowing. Yes, Money changing the play. Option. Keeps it. Money inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. Larry Melton made the tackle of Mike every time he's gone to an audible. It's worked. Every time. Scott Stacy had a shot at him to throw him for a loss on the option play, number 54, but he just couldn't wrap up. Barry Lunny, which shows you what kind of athlete the quarterback is. Here he runs the option there. Stacy trying to get him down, just misses the tackle. And you're right, Mike, he has just got a real knack of picking the right call and checking off against this Auburn defense. Second and a yard. Hill. The first down, Miska made the tackle outside the 10 yard line. Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator for Auburn, is looking for any kind of change he can make. He's bringing Jason Miska into the ball game now, the senior, a middle linebacker, and taking out Takeo Spikes, the freshman linebacker, just trying to get a little bit more experience in on defense. And this is hardly the kind of offense Danny Ford ran at Clemson. No, it's not. Uh, Danny Ford was an option team. Uh, two-back team, but Rocky Felker has added a lot to this offense the one-back style, and he's talked to Danny about switching to it. Madre Hill already has 95 yards rushing. You have to have balance. Now, you can't do one thing and expect to win. Lunny, another great decision. Ducks inside the three. There's a flag down, and this looks like a hold. Let's go to Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, this latest Arkansas drive is coming over their right side of their offensive line where they lost their fine right tackle, Winston Alderson. His replacement, Scott Rivers, has been doing extremely well. He's had a couple of pancakes. Alderson has a sprained right knee. They're going to take him in at halftime, see to determine his severity. But uh, right now, his replacement, Scott Rivers, looking terrific out here. Auburn again, mighty flat. This is amazing. Not a single member of this football team has ever been to a bowl game, and we were talking their senior linebacker last night anthony harris he was saying hey my first two years here we weren't good enough to go to a bowl game our last two years we were on probation this is our year we're still hungry well they've got to find their appetite and find it in a hurry you're absolutely right mike you're right about rivers too they have not gone away from the right side first and 17. hill on the delay inside the 15-yard line. And what's so tough for Auburn on defense is Barry Lunny hasn't thrown many interceptions. So now you're looking at unless he makes a mistake down here or they drop the ball, you're looking at at least three going on that board from where they're at right now. So it's Danny Ford's team in just complete control from the start. And you have to keep an eye on the clock, too. It's running with 7.01 to go in the first half. Three wide. changing the play and as the play clock winds down he's going to use a timeout second arkansas timeout of the first half we'll be back to little rock arkansas in control go ahead screen Find a true test paint store at uncle bob's true value hardware james stallworth with 20 years of paint experience helps guarantee customer satisfaction james loves to help you and he offers free custom color tinning and perfect matches using the latest technology with this color analyzer computer. And James can save you time and money on your next painting project. Paint Help is spoken at Uncle Bob's in downtown Andalusia. Come see us for all your paint needs. Hi folks, I'm Terry Garner with Lee Pontiac in Crestview, Florida, where we believe in doing business the right way. Friendly service, good quality, and fair prices. Just take a look at these. Right now at Lee Pontiac in Crestview, everything is reduced and ready to sell. You won't find a better place for Buick Skylarks, Centuries, and Regals. 
So come see us and take a test drive at Lee Pontiac and Christie. Remember, folks, you may drive a little, but you'll save a lot. Don Shula leads the Dolphins west to San Diego to take on the defending AFC champion Chargers at the Murph. Don't even get me started about Shula. It's time for the NHL. So when they ice it, ice it, hook it, hook it, save it, and score it, score it. You'll need to know. NHL Tonight on ESPN2, Tuesday through Saturday at 11.30 p.m. And now for our Sega Sports students of the game from Auburn, senior kicker Matt Hawkins. Matt is in graduate school at Auburn, working on his MBA, a 3.9 GPA. And from Arkansas, senior quarterback Barry Lunny with a 3.2 GPA. He's a major in kinesiology. Sega Sports congratulates these fine student athletes. Thank you, Mike Guthrie. <laughs> Doesn't that hurt your throat? No. No, I've been practicing a long time. You can do it all, can't you? Not everything. Second and 13 for Arkansas. Leading 21-0 over number 11, Auburn. One it. Holds one toward the end zone. Lucas! Incomplete. Anthony Lucas was there, couldn't hold it. Larry Melton with the coverage. Boy, that was a good-looking throw from Lunny. Good decision to go to Anthony Lucas. Just ran out a little territory on the right side. Lucas is one-on-one -on -one against Larry Melton because they've got all three receivers to the other side. Linebacker trying to get under him. Mustella, number 47. Oh, should have caught that ball. Just ran out and dropped the ball. Ran out of a little real estate also. Third down. Huge play for Auburn's defense. Arkansas has not missed on the third down tonight. Lonnie, quarterback draw. Shovel to him. And that is going to be a forward lateral. He got to like the way he thinks so. Yeah. I mean, he's always thinking, always trying to make something happen. Nearly got himself a touchdown out of the play. And did a tremendous job to get any positive yardage. Well, his dad's a high school coach. And uh, always looking for something positive on the field. They, they go to a quarterback draw here. Set. Works up the field. Now sees he's not going to get enough yardage. On his way down. Tried to pull a J.C. Watts and throw the ball out there. But a little bit forward. So they'll mark it back at the 14-yard line where it will be fourth down. And a lot of rep will come on for a field goal. You may remember the name of Chuck Waterett. That's his uncle. Kicked for the St. Louis football Cardinals. Now the St. Louis Rams. You don't think I'm going to get that wrong a few times No, this year? you're going to have it <laughs> perfect. And the Oakland Raiders, it took me all this time to get the Los Angeles Raiders. Waterett to make it 24-0. It will be a 31-yard attempt. Dead center. And Arkansas can do no wrong. The Hogs up 24 to nothing. Well, Mike, I'm not going to say it's time to, to heat up the bus in the airplane yet because I still think there's a little life in this Auburn football team. But the problem becomes when you're on offense and you're only on the field four minutes and 45 seconds. When you go back on the field, you just try to make things happen. And you're always trying to speed the game up a little bit and try to get the extra things and you force some things when you do that. Let's check in with Mike Adamley. Mike, not what we expected tonight. No, indeed. As a matter of fact, Mike and Mike, this Arkansas team coached by Danny Ford playing like the national champions of Frank Broyles back in 1964. When you think of Arkansas football, he is the first name that comes to mind, the legendary coach, now athletic director, Frank Broyles and wanting one of his crowning of achievements, that national championship team. So there were better players on that team like Ronnie Cavanis and Kenny Hatfield, but the two most famous today, Cowboys <laughs> owner Jerry Jones and former coach Jimmy Johnson. That's a nice team picture to have, Mike. Spent a day with Frank Royals years and years ago when he was still an active coach and I was a young reporter. Came to Jacksonville, Florida to recruit an offensive tackle and he's being highly recruited. Spent an entire afternoon with him. By the end of the day, the young man was totally committed to Arkansas, just like he'd grown up there. Frank Royals was a heck of a recruit. Baker, 
with another kickoff return and stuffed as he got near the 25-yard line. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike, earlier today in the Big 8, not one of the big games, but significant. Oklahoma was down 9-7 to Missouri. Eric Moore to Gerald Moore. 72 yards. Gerald Moore also ran for a buck 17. Oklahoma survives by four. Mike, Gerald Moore is a tremendous running back, but I'm glad to see Eric Moore come back and have a pretty good ball game against Missouri this week. He had a tough game last week against Kansas and uh, bounced back. Critical possession for Auburn. They take over with 6-10 to go in the half. They're going to white wall. Four-man rush against Patrick Nix. Throws underneath and throws complete. Karsten Bailey makes the grab and moves the sticks out to about the 34-yard line. The numbers on Nix. Who's really good at looking people off as primary receiver. Doesn't take sacks. It's just everything you want in a smart quarterback. Doesn't have the major league arm, but does everything else. 14 3 and 1 is a starter. Next over the middle. Again, this time for Robert Baker, the freshman. And they're in a hurry-up offense right now. Arkansas doesn't give you a lot of time because of the pass rush to throw deep throws. Robert Baker over the middle, just good yardage. Vincent Bradford with the tackle. But Auburn has to be patient, just get on the board here with 5.33 to go. Three wide receivers. trailed like this was 1990 against Tennessee. They were down 22 to 3. Gaucher cannot make the catch. Good coverage back there by Spencer Brown, who was the fastest player on this team, and he was with him step for step. Good coverage again, Mike. Jolie Dunn, we talked about the defensive coordinator. Sometimes he'll blitz, sometimes he'll drop eight people in coverage. But here's good coverage by Spencer Brown. Ball thrown outside to Willie Gaucher, but just couldn't make the completion. Second and 10 with 5-11 to go in the half. Auburn in its own 45. Comes the blitz. Nick's on low, complete to the sideline. Nice catch by Gaucher. Let's check in again with Mike Adamley. Mike? You know, guys, sometimes we forget that coaches get up for the game just as much as the players do. They relish each week's challenge. And talking to Terry Bowden last night, his eyes lit up literally when we mentioned Joe Lee Dunn, Arkansas's defensive coordinator. And you could almost hear the adrenaline flow when he talked about coming up with answers for Dunn's multiple defensive formations you know it's a, a part of a coach's personality i don't get a chance to see too often but i found it fascinating and right now done winning the chess match and mike if if you love challenges coaching's a great profession to be in here's another blitz it's the fullback beasley down to the 40 yard line coaches can't afford to be down <laughs> they've got to be up the players sometimes can get over it quickly but uh coaches i'll tell you they they live and die for this three and a half, four hours. And, you know, you look at Terry Bowden's record, 25-3-1 in his third year. It looks like a misprint. Who could be 25-3-1? And, and you got to credit Pat Dye now. Pat Dye left a lot of talent at Auburn, but Terry Bowden and his coaching staff have done a nice job with it. And they think they had the best recruiting class they have ever had this year. Playing some of those freshmen, too. The young team. Nick's out of the shotgun, rolling right. Under pressure, throws back over the middle. And it's intercepted, picked off by Philip Hayes. And if you hear an announcer like me say, throws back over the middle, very often somebody in the wrong color jersey gets the ball. Well, Mike, you're right. Most interceptions come when the quarterback throws across his body because he's not able to get any oomph on the ball. You're going to see Patrick Nix roll the right and see he's completely thrown across his body. Got away with it early in the game one time, but this time Philip Hayes makes him pay. Junior Solly, number 90, Gino 
Bell, number 91, with real good pressure on Patrick Nix. But when you throw across your body, there's a price to pay, and it's an interception. Bell and Solly have had outstanding years up front, and Arkansas has the ball back at its own 27, the third turnover for the Hogs defense, and that'll lead the SEC in that department. Mondre Hill blasted as he got to the 29-yard line. Big hit by Mark Smith. Arkansas has one timeout left with the 407 on the clock, so plenty of time for Arkansas to get back in the end zone. Mike Adamley was talking about the chess match. Uh, Jolie Dunn blitzing, but Jolie Dunn won that play because Jolie Dunn dropped into heavy coverage, so Patrick Nix was under pressure by a four-man rush, still through the interception. Second and eight. Lunny with a short set again. Complete to Lucas. And Lucas turns it into a big play up near midfield. Last week, Auburn played against Western Michigan. Did you see Anthony Lucas make the catch? And they were lethargic in that ball game. Arkansas had a week off, so they really had two weeks to prepare for this game. So two weeks to prepare for this plan. And this plan has been spotless. Lunny, first half on both sure sides. Has. And Lunny has only missed three passes all night long. First and 10, Arkansas. After a gain of 18, 3.14 to go in the half. Madre Hill across midfield, dragging people with him to the Auburn 48, including Marcellus Mostella and Solomon. And your worst nightmare if you're a head football coach is the fact that the crowd, like you mentioned, Mike, early, has been in this game from the start, and the crowd's just... Uh, feasting on what the Arkansas players are doing. They just, it's been a high for Arkansas and the players and the fans since this game started. And that's the fifth time this year that Hill has gone over the 100 yard mark. On the season, he has rushed for 990 yards. Running on the option to Hill. Lot of room. Madre Hill over a thousand yards for this season. Mostella and Lyron Thomas had to make the tackle. Barry Lunny's going to start to the right side. You three, see the three receivers to the top of the screen. They're going to all crack back on the linebackers of Auburn. <laughs> Down the line, here's the pitch, and all three uh, wide receivers, Cotto Cotton, number 13, with a block, but they all block linebackers, which allowed Monte Hill to get to the corner. What a bonus that is if you're a wide out for the down field and get some too high for Anthony Eubanks, the sophomore, at 6'2". One of the few times tonight, Lunny hasn't been perfect. Let's go, Danny Ford knows and you got to keep the pressure on Auburn. You got to keep scoring points. You got to keep turning up the heat on that Auburn football team. Don't get to a point where you get satisfied with 24 on the board. Terry Bob knows he needs a big play. This team has only had five interceptions this year coming into this game. They could certainly use one here. The option Hill. Madre Hill. If you haven't seen him play yet, remember the name. As Mike Godfrey said, here's a young man who predicted one day he'll win the Heisman. He might do it. Let's go to Mike Adam. And again, guys, just a sophomore. You know when Danny Ford reprimanded Madre in front of the team after that opening loss to SMU, the point that he was trying to make to his young tailback was to run tougher, run harder. And tonight he has done just that. Granted, Barry Lunny has made his job easier. But the thing that you see Madre Hill doing is squaring his shoulders and running a great deal north to south. He has been plenty tough tonight. And we even had little J.J. Metters downfield knocking people off. One thing about it, when you're 5'2", you can get leverage <laughs> because you're, you're going to be underneath and blocking. 159 to go in the half. Another first down for Arkansas. They are just whipping Auburn. Lunny with a quick out. Eubanks can't get there as Lunny was under real pressure that time from Terry Solomon who leads this team in sacks. On the last play, the linebacker, Anthony Harris, number 53, knew Barry Lunny was checking off to a pass, so they may now 
have the checkoffs so that they know that he's going to throw or run on his checkoffs. He looks like he's checking off to the option or he's checking off to throw the football in the quick game. Usually you go in a live color. You make a color call on every play, and then when you make the red call, the red call, then anything after that is the next play that you're going to run. Second and ten, Hawks. Lunny on the option. Great control of his body. And Lunny down to the 12-yard line. Charles Rowe. You hear people say, you got to hurry, but don't rush. <laughs> and he did. The Tekio spikes the freshman linebacker, just misses another tackle. The great talent, but remember, he's a freshman. There's a miss by number 55, Tekio spikes. And you can't miss tackles like they're doing right now. But again, you've got a defense that's been on the field the whole first half. They've got to be whipped at this point. Clock running, approaching a minute and a half. Lonnie changing the play again. Then Eubanks in motion, goes back to the fourth side. Flags are down everywhere. Lonnie's into the end zone. Let's check the penalty. It's got to be holding here, Mike. Where they have motion came. to begin with. <laughs> Preliminary signal is against Arkansas. You see a side judge throw it, usually holding. Of holding on the offer, the 10 yards from the, from the line. So they'll back him up 10. Danny Ford hasn't much, had much of a chance to be concerned in this game. No, but you look at him, he's still, he, he knows you, you can't feel satisfied because he's bringing this program from down. I mean, they've been down and they didn't know how to win and now they're starting to get to that point where they expect to win. Danny Ford getting an explanation and lodging his protest. A lot of coaches will get a list of officials. They like to call them by their first name. A lot of people study the films of officials and they'll chart what calls they make so they know a little bit about them going into the ball game. And there are coaches who will know their wives and children's names. They even send them gifts at Christmas time. <laughs> First and 22. Lonnie straight down the middle, complete inside the 15-yard line again to Eubanks. ESPN2 has all the college football action Saturday at 12 noon. Baylor in Miami, then at 7, Eddie George leads Ohio State into Minnesota. Put a period on the day with sports night. Arkansas with a clock running, 50 seconds to go in the half, a 24-0 bidding for more. Second and 11, they can get a first down inside the two. Lunny under pressure, does the smart thing and throws that one away. And he was under pressure from Jimmy Brumbaugh. And he may have gotten a split lip out of that one. Brumbaugh, 6'1", 256. Good pressure, Mike, but Jimmy Brumball, number 96. There was just was no place for Barry Lunny to throw the ball. And Brumball just planted him. We've got a timeout, 37 seconds to go, first half. Hey! Hey, real! You know, when you have something special, you don't just throw it away. Of course, years ago, we thought we could throw away anything, just use it and, and trash it. Well, we're all a little smarter now. Instead of those one-shot batteries, I use Renewal from Railback. Advanced alkaline power. You don't just trash them after one shot. You renew them, and they come back strong. They say the world throws out 20 billion batteries a year. We can do a lot better. Play smart. Railback Renewal. A spirit of teamwork. That's what makes the Home Depot proud to be a sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games in Atlanta and the 96 Paralympic Games. We're also proud to have Rubbermaid as a member of our Home Depot Olympic family. Since 1920, Rubbermaid has been one of the most trusted brands in America. Striving to be the best is the mark of Rubbermaid and of Home Depot, helping to bring the games 
to America. The road doesn't always rise to meet you. And I think in uh, both Panama is at your back. So for energy, always rely on a low-fat, highly nutritious power bar. Thirty-seven seconds. Pete Burks, number eight, as he comes in as Lonnie getting medical attention on the sideline. Young man, seldom used. Only two out of five. He's run the ball six times. Big question is whether they'll let him put it up or not here in this situation. Looks like a quarterback draw, and he slipped as he got to the ten. Brumbaugh with another big play. And the crowd wanted a late hit. Well, that's usually what you do when a backup quarterback comes in, as you see Barry Lunny being worked on on the sidelines. Because you want the points down here, you don't want to catch your backup quarterback in too tough a situation. Danny Ford wanted him to run the football in the draw. A lot of rep will come on to try the field goal. The spot is the 17, so it's a 27 yard attempt with an angle. And a lot of rep knocks another one through. Go to Mike Tirico. Michael? All right, Mike, coming up on the GMAC Halftime Report, we'll talk about Nebraska-Colorado, the big game in Boulder, another scare for Northwestern, and a recap of the entire day in the Southeast Conference. That's coming up on the GMAC Halftime Report, Mike. All right, thank you, Mike. An impressive first half for Arkansas as Lunny has gotten his medical attention being taken off the field, but his team leading favorite Auburn. Nothing. You're my agent. You have to do something about this. My face is on the cup with a duck. Well, I'm allergic to ducks. Well, what about Bugs Bunny? He's cool. What? Emmett Smith has Bugs? He's just a running back. Now at McDonald's, get a free Looney Place to go cup when you supersize any extra value meal. The NFL's Emmett Smith with Bugs, Barry Sanders with Taz, Bledsoe with Wiley, and Marino with Daffy on new to go cups. How'd I get on a McDonald's cup with Marino? I'm not an agent. I'm allergic to dolphins. Have you had